In this unassuming corner of the Midwest United States lies a manufacturing powerhouse where German roots and American pride meet to make some of the wildest horizontal five axis machines I've ever laid eyes on. I had the opportunity to check out Grobe Systems five axis live event in Bluffton, Ohio, and you're not gonna believe the scale of manufacturing happening right off the side of this highway. First off, I had to get a tour of this place because it's massive. So we're here in the apprenticeship area. Uh, we've had the apprenticeship here in the US since we started in 1990. It's really been an important piece of where we are today. We've grown a lot because of it. We started off pretty small. I think the original class was six apprentices. This class just started back in June. There were 61. 61. 61. So yeah, you can see here, they got a mix of you know, manual machines getting into some CNC and then they work their way all the way up to five axis machines. So we got two G350s over there. This whole area, we're producing parts to produce our machines. We use grow machines where we can. Um, we don't make wow. grinders or lathes, so you'll see some other brands, but for the most part, it's grooms making grooms. Look at the size of that. Now, how many of these would be, you know, off the shelf grow machines versus special purpose that you guys have built for them? Uh, majority of this up here is, is product customers can buy also. Right. Look at the size of that. Is that a tombstone? That's a tombstone. That's a, a older model machine. It's a, we call it BZ 1600. Uh, it's a pallet changer, four axis machine. Uh, it's not a model we make today, but we make smaller versions today. Wow, and that's doing a lot of like the, the casting, yeah, weldment, end weldment, of things. Uh, I mean, a lot of this is, can be for automation or assembly equipment. We have an area where uh, the routers start, it goes across the saw, they uh, then bring it out to the shop where now it's sitting waiting on, on milling or turning, whatever it may be. Um, and what's interesting in this area here, so these two bays, if you'd have came here two years ago, it would look completely different. We had one machine, one operator running that, uh, you know, responsible for the setups, the tooling, uh, quality and such, but the utilization time is terrible, right? So we decided to add automation where we can. So you, you can see we have pallet systems uh, on all these machines here. Um, we've got for example, 20 pallet, uh, pallet changer, Oof. external tool magazine. So with that spindle, we can get close to 500 tools available. Wow. Uh, and now we can spend the, the time during the day shift getting prepared for nights and weekends, right? So it's easier for us to staff day shift as well. But overall, uh, we're much more efficient because of it than, um, you know, not, we're practicing what we preach, right? Automation. I was about to say so, the exact same thing. You yeah. know, it's one thing to say, this is what you should do, but yeah. Here it is in action. That's one thing I remember when we saw the German facility is a lot of the lessons that Grove learns from making their own parts, they then turn around and build into yep. the automation solutions or, hey, do you know what? We end up putting larger tool magazines on this machine all the time. We're gonna make that an option for this. How many Grove machines would be in this facility roughly? And I know some of them are massive, some of them are smaller. What kind of numbers are we talking here? If I had a guess, there's probably 25, 30 Grove machines. Wow. Making Grove machines here. And how many people work here on a daily basis? Just over a thousand people. So back here, this is, uh, so these were 350s on this side of the aisle. This is 550. So we have, and this is a linear system. So we're using one piece of automation is connecting multiple oh. machines. It's funny when you, when you get to machines of this level, <laughs> it's difficult sometimes to even know what you're looking at. Is that automation? Yeah. Is that a mill? Oh yeah, look at this thing. Two setup stations where they load and unload parts, cell controller there, and then you've got uh, separate screens for telling the operator, uh, you know, load a part, unload a part, here are the work steps that can all be programmed in there. And you can see you guys actually have hedgehog set up in almost all of those too. So these are high, high production units. Yeah, that's right. A big portion of what we're building is, is custom uh, machinery, whether it be automation, assembly equipment, very specialized um, that we make once and we may never build that again. I can't believe, how, how many square feet is this place? Like Roughly 500,000. 500,000? Yeah. Look at this. So this whole bay uh, is basically one machining center at the end. We've got two setup stations. That's actually the size of the pallet, so roughly. That's a pallet. That's a pallet, yep. Uh, two meter by one and a half meter. We designed it basically for the major machine components of that, the moving components of the machine. So this is part of the pallet loader, Y-axis slide, mm. magazine frame, 
uh, trunnion uh, for a double spindle machine. That's a trunnion getting machined right now. That's not a guy putting a trunnion in a machine to run something. He's machining the trunnion. Exactly. Yep. Wow. Yep. You can park your car in there. <laughs> That's right. See, wow. So like on a 350, that would be the Z axis housing, holds the spindle. Uh, there would be the Y axis slides. That's what carries the trunnion. And then on the last pallet oh, there, okay. the, uh, trunnions for the three. The one thing I noticed too about your actual trunnions here, they are big and they are heavy. Yeah. When you see those things flip upside down, I'm always just amazed. And look at this, that's the actual machine over there. Yeah, it's back there, we can't see it yet. <laughs> so two setup stations and then we have pallet storage area. So you see what's queued up, oh, ready, ready to go. Lee. Look at the size, like you're not, it, it's hard to get your head around how big those are. Yeah. This is where the tools get loaded, the machines on the other side yet. And then, Ooh. so it's like a rack type magazine. Yep. And then we have a gantry comes down, picks the tools out of here. And the gantry then bring it over to the machine. The reason we do that <laughs> is then when we add a second machine, now we can share tools between machines. And there's the pallet loader. So that's what transports the pallets from the setup stations down to the machine. You guys have a railway. Yeah, railway, it's battery operated, vision system on it. That's the pallet changer. That pallet changer it's comes the all the way down here so this actual machine cell is, it's like a city block. Yeah. Why Ohio? Why did it start here? Was there a reason why it came to Bluffton? There are a couple of reasons. First one is the, the owner, uh, Burkhart Grove at the time, this is in the 80s, um, was building uh, training aircraft and then small aircraft. Mm -hmm. And we're right next to a, a county airport. So actually our first building here was a, was a hangar next to the airport. Of course it was. So he had that access and then we were pretty focused on automotive at the time. We're actually 100% focused on automotive and being two hours from Detroit was important. Ah, uh, okay. And then it's also a lot of small rural communities in this area, just like in Germany is. Mm -hmm. So the kind of the cultures match pretty well. For sure. Uh, so uh, those are the three main reasons we end up oh, in where we are. When you think of Grobe, you think of the massive five axis machines, but there's another whole half of the business here that I wasn't aware of. Grobe Systems goes a step further and makes entire turnkey production lines for its customers. You send them the part, they design the whole system to make it. Is this one unit that's getting put together right yeah, here? So what am is, I looking this at? This is a leak test cell. So um, over on the other side, there's just the um, docking bases are over there because this customer ordered a flexible system um, that can leak, leak test different types of parts. But basically the, the parts come in on a conveyor, the robot picks it up, places it into a leak test system, and when it's done, it can either reject it or move it down the line. So not only do you guys make assemblies, you know, machine assemblies for making parts, this is actually a QA thing. Every step of the process, you guys- Not, not every step, but, but a lot of, of we've got our core areas we, we focus on. Uh, leak I mean, testers. this is more automation than anything, yeah, right? This is 100% automation. Yeah, right, yeah. there's not a single spindle in that. Look at the size of these robots, woo! So this is moving, this would be like a logistics cell for a uh, V8 block. So incoming, you would have blocks and on, stacked on dunnage. The robot will uh, pick out of the dunnage, feed a conveyor, that conveyor will then feed a machining line. So and this then, is the first step of it. First step and also the last. Some of these are built where you have incoming raw parts and then we stack the finished parts back out on the same dunnage. So it literally have Raw parts one side, finished parts the other side. Now, if this is the first or last part of the chain, how much of the rest of that chain would you guys also build? As much as possible. We want to build machining centers, right? So that, that's kind of the, the core focus, but those customers want us to do more than that, right? Correct. So what else can you offer to solve their problems or automate the process? You know, having one supplier for projects like that is a real advantage than interfacing multiple. Um, so it's really a, it's, it's a, it's a solution to help us uh, sell more machining centers. It makes a lot of sense. I just had no idea you guys even did that. Most of the time they give us, here's the drawing, here's what we have to verify. I need so many parts per year and we design. Figure it out. And figure it out. Yeah. Wow. That's next level engineering. Yeah. We've got roughly 150 engineers that work just here. That do no. all this customization. What is this? I see a giant linear track doing that is something. A gantry moving parts. So uh, this whole area, this is what we call an e-mobility line. So uh, it's 
It's for making stators for an electric motor for a, for a passenger car, right? So some of these uh, machines are making what's called a hairpin where you, you basically, you have a roll of copper wire, it's insulated, you pull it out, you cut it. You have to mill the ends off the, the, end, uh, the insulation off it. Um, we've got in those, each one of those, there's eight spindles in there. I think there's 60,000 RPM, HSK hey. 15. And then they go through servos and actuators and we have to bend this hairpin shape and then uh, it will stack all these hairpins into a core. And then once we have a full core stack, this gantry will come, pick the core up. We'll go to the next uh, area of the line. It could be uh, laser welding. It could be gelling, uh, twisting. There, there's other processes in that, but really what we're producing is the ability to produce that type of uh, component in high quality and high production. I mean. You're not putting this in if you want to make 10. This is for hundreds and hundreds of thousands. Now, it was time to see these machines and what makes them stand apart. Uh, so this is our G550 size machine. Uh, so it's our second largest in this platform. Uh, it's also paired with our PSSR system. So this is a rotary pallet pool. It's got a double fork on it. Uh, so for, made for quicker pallet changes. Uh, the machine's smart enough to learn cycle times. Uh, so once we reach the last 60 seconds left of the part ahead of it, it'll automatically get the next pallet, stage it so we can do a real quick pallet change. Oh, all on its own. All it on its kind own, of yeah. learns as it goes. The first time it has to learn the cycle time, of course, uh, you can type in a rough estimate um, to begin with, but if you're pretty far off, it'll learn it, and then from there, it'll just keep going um, and automatically do it. The machine may be smarter than I am if there was ever any question. It's definitely smarter than me. So all our machines in this line are all the exact same kinematics. Uh, so horizontal, uh, trunnion style, single-sided trunnion style, uh, just bigger or smaller. And so. what's the advantage to that? Why, why that approach? Uh, chip management. Uh, so obviously being a horizontal machine, you get that on top of it, but then obviously we can go clear upside down as well to dump all the chips Which on top. This is a 28 inch impeller, uh, more for the power generation uh, sector. Just doing some air cuts here, going through there, showing you the motion of the machine. Uh, the leading edge on this blade is about seven and a quarter inches long. Ooh, so. And it's very, very thin. Yes. And that finish is straight off the machine. That hasn't been taken out, polished, Correct. nothing. Here we made a, a Statue of Liberty. Ooh, that's a fun one. How many hours was that bad boy? Uh, this was about 30 hours to machine uh, from a solid round stock. Uh, there's actually a, a block to prep it uh, inside the PSS here as well. Uh, that's the nice thing with the PSSR as well. You have a setup station outside of the machine, so you can get all your setups done here while the machine's still running. I mean, this also is a testament to obviously how well Groves run, but this really is a testament to how good you application engineers are. <laughs> Do you have like any it. idea how hard it is to get in there, keep nice finishes on things with oh, yeah. zero rigidity? Yep. That must have been quite a bit of work. It takes some effort, yeah, for yeah, sure. A little bit? Yeah. <laughs> so G550, you're saying that's kind of the middle of the road. 350, I guess, is its little brother. Yep. So this is our second smallest machine. Uh, this is our 350. This particular machine is a extra special 350 for us because it's a tandem drive machine. So here you can see we actually have two B axis on this machine. So we have the normal B and then we also have a BG. But the rest of the machine is the same, just like our normal 350s, only this has the extra tandem drive on it. We have a lot of different options when it comes to the top. This one is actually both driven, so it's a full driven Ooh. tail stock on the top. Uh, we have a couple different modes for it, whether it's a uh, master slave or both driving, depending on whether you're roughing or finishing. So this is a very specialized machine as well. This is what we call our dynamic table machine. So you can see it's uh, a round pallet now. Yep. Uh, so that's normally made for bliss machining, aer aerospace types of components. Uh, the B-axis is a lot faster than what our normal 350, but then also our table height is different. Now you have been working with Grove for a while. What makes Grove different to you and why did you make that decision? That's a loaded question, you know. I mean, there's, there's a lot of aspects to the machine that I love. Uh, being more mechanical person and, you know, engineering background, I think what really makes this machine very unique to me is the horizontal spindle, how well balanced it is. I love the fact that it's also, the movements are very smooth, very fluid. It's almost like a ballet, you know? And um, the accuracy is obviously one of the best things about it, repeatability, accuracy. Um, from what we, you know, the kind of parts that we make, 
we make differential covers, we make oil pans, we make a lot of that stuff. So in many cases, doing them on a horizontal, your, your chips are going to fall. But when we're doing them on the vertical, we seem to be remachining some of those chips, as you already know. For sure. So the finishes you know, are not going to be the same. We do have some items that are longer cycle times. Uh, the other thing that it's really done for us is it's taken some of those parts like our oil filter housings that are pretty much like you know, six-sided machining. Right. And, and we just do those in two setups. You're not putting them between eight vices anymore. And, and the finishes are you know, far superior. I think total cycle time is down. I haven't asked my guys for the cycle time yet uh, on the last batch that we've run. But I would probably say that we have probably 15, 20% cycle time savings. Make sure you look at all the benefits of the machine because some of the obvious, you know, are obvious, but there are a lot of hidden benefits that are not there. There's a lot of intangibles, like we've seemed to learn more about how well the spindle is protected against chatter and stuff like that, how the chip conveyor is pr uh, protected against heavy loads where it'll just stop if you get too much or you get something jamming it up. Like there's a lot of protection, a lot of safety features that the machine has built in that we didn't even know.